हेलो स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू दिस वंडरफुल सेशन सो आज आई एज यू ऑल नो इन दिस सीरीज वी आर डिस्कसिंग योर प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन वेन एवर वी अपेयर फॉर बोर्ड बोर्ड इट इज ऑलवेज इंपॉर्टेंट टू रिवाइज योर प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन Yes, because these previous year questions gives us an idea that what type of questions which can be asked in your examination, what are the patterns, and how we can attempt it. See, when we talk about your uh, those examination where you have to solve or uh, let's say mathematics, mathematics we have a question or the derivation which you have to do completely. Clear? So that thing we uh, I uh, which I believe. it's a uh, uh, yes it is difficult but over there we have to if we have started one derivation we have to complete it but when we talk about biology the one problem which we face is how much we have to write because information is infinite where we have to stop because time management when we have is a biology paper that is very difficult so one has to manage it and how we can do it by practicing your previous year questions and the sample paper so in this series which is happening right now we will be discussing your previous year questions and if you uh, want to attain more than 95% exam marks or uh, uh, more than that also then what you have to do is you have to practice these previous year questions will give you definitely is going to give you confidence uh, uh, like uh, these are the questions which were asked so they were very easy definitely i can uh, complete them so various hurdles are there when we say that we have to attain more than 95% examination yes the target is high but no no one can stop us from achieving it yes everybody are you ready so let's start the session where i'll be discussing 2018 questions and 2018 questions with respect to your biology examination biology specifically the zoology part ready everyone let's start so what do you have to do it simultaneously you have to give me answers also so uh, uh whatever questions i'll be asking see i'll not only confine to these uh, this particular paper i'll be taking other papers also but uh, in between the session i'll be asking those questions also which are important for your examination now this is an old pattern exam exam which happened in 2018 now we have mcqs also involved but in this paper no mcqs were there okay so yes i'll be asking questions so get ready for that everyone now <laughs> see earlier uh, in 2018 1718 paper the question they were of uh, types like very short answer type question the short answer type questions we have long answer type questions like this but right now we have is uh, when we have is a 2022 23 paper we have is multiple choice questions we have is very short we have is the short we have is a long and the case based studies questions also so we will be practicing those also So let's start this session. So first, I'll be dealing with a uh, very short answer type question, which were asked in two thousand eighteen paper. The first question, which was there, was how do cytokine barrier provide innate immunity in human? Guys, always remember this when we have one mark question. Clear? Try to uh, give an answer. Suppose they are, they are asking a single word. Try to give a that word answer only because marks dedicated to these question is just one mark. if definition is there just provide a, a line definition with an example that's it do not go beyond if you know lots and lots of about uh, uh, data about the cytokine barrier this is not required here only one line is enough now how do cytokines barrier provide innate immunity in humans now listen guys what do you mean by innate immunity innate immunity is those immunity which is present from birth this is present from birth yes i'll change this color it <coughs> they are present from birth that means when you were born you were born with the innate immunity now this innate immunity which is present from birth has various barriers the first barrier we have is a physical barrier we have is a physiological barrier second barrier the third we have is a cellular barrier the fourth we have is the cytokine barrier but question is related to the cytokine barrier so we will be talking about the cytokine barrier only now cytokine barrier now always remember students 
whenever we have is the cell suppose we have is a cell and this cell is infected with virus this cell is infected with virus suppose a virus is there and that virus has infected these cells okay so this is let's say this is virus okay now these cells they are going to release some chemicals they will release some chemicals they will release some chemicals clear what's the name of this chemical these are termed as interferon they are termed as interferon clear now these interferons will go to the nearby cells now we have these cells they will go to the non viral infected cells so these are what non viral infected cell that means these are normal cell now what are these these are the virus infected cell so what do you mean by cytokine barriers in the cytokine barrier those cells which are virus infected they release some chemicals which are termed the proteinaceous substances which is termed as interferons they go to non viral they go to normal cell which are near to it and protect it clear so that gives us an indication so whenever we have a thief in our house what do we do we shout so that our neighbors will get to know that there is thief around it so this is what happens similarly cells also behave in such way this is one of the way of cell to cell communication get ready that means virus is there because definitely this virus is going to use the cell machinery and going to uh, produce a copy of this virus now copies of virus can affect these uh, another cells which are near to it so this is just a way of communication so they communicate it depending on that they will start uh, producing that uh, there will start producing their own defense mechanism so that they can be protected from these viruses clear so this is a cytokine barrier clear now because it's a one mark only so one line is enough no need to uh, write so much let's move on to the next question write the name of the following this is again a one mark question so the two parts are there both the parts they are of 0.5 marks this is also 0.5 this will be of 0.5 marks this will be also of 0.5 marks clear now write the name of the following right now at 15 million year primate that was ape like which was the primate which was ape like so there were two if you remember around 15 million years ago one was a ramapithecus and a second is a dryopithecus so dryopithecus they were more ape like if you remember our sessions dryopithecus they were more ape like and the ramapithecus they were more human like so for this the first one the correct option we have is the dryopithecus dryopithecus clear now at 2 million year ago a primate that lives in east african grassland what is the right answer that is the australopithecus this is a australopithecus will you remember this guys will you remember this the dryopithecus and australopithecus both these is important now this is a previous year question so definitely questions like this can be asked in your examination so this can this question can be modified in this way like uh, uh, what were those organisms who started burying their uh, uh, relatives this can be uh, one of the example who started burying their relative dead bodies clear so these questions can be asked so this is a question from my side guys you have to give answer in comment section i need answer from you guys in comment section 
because definitely I also want to know that how much you have learned till now. Clear? Clear? Guys, is it clear? So, this is another question. Question like this can be asked. So, you should know the important points of human evolution. One of the very important topic. Now, moving on to the next is, mention the chemical change that pro-insulin undergoes to be able to act as a mature insulin. So, this is a very easy and direct question from your notes itself. So, when we talk about guys, pro-insulin. Pro-insulin. Guys, you know how does a pro-insulin look like? So, pro-insulin is somewhere or other like this. It is like this. So, there are the two chains. Guys, in the yellow, we have is the two chains, A chain and the B chain. So, wait. So, it has two chains. Guys, this is what? This is A chain. The second one is B chain. Right? Pro-insulin. The third one which I have which I have made with a orange color which is uh, curved in nature. This is your what? This is your C chain. This is your C chain. Now remember, this is a pro-insulin. So in a human body, the insulin is formed in an inactive form which is a pro-insulin. Now these two chains, they are bound to each other. Yes. Absolutely right students, they are bound to each other by a bond which is termed as a disulfide bond. So which bond it, it is? The disulfide bond. Clear? Now this pro-insulin is converted into a mature insulin or insulin. or insulin. Clear? How? How does it happen? When the C chain removes. So C chain will not be there and the two, two chain they are bound to each other with the help of a disulfide bond. Clear? So that means we have only two chain. This is a A chain and this is a B chain and if C chain is removed that means it is a insulin. So, this processing is important for the functioning of insulin. <coughs> <coughs> Guys, clear? Everybody, it should be clear to you. Because we are here, we have dedicated some time. So, that means things should enter in our mind. Because now it, we are at that, that position where our exams, they are, uh, exams are near and uh, we have to retain things for your board examination. Clear? Clear guys? Now another important question which can be asked from this topic is, I will write it down here. With this also, see these are the possible questions. So this is another question I am asking, which answer is already there on screen. The bond present in, present in two chains of insulin. This is question number two. So this communication I always feel with my students is important. So I keep on asking questions. This is a very bad habit of Chavi ma'am. See, she keep on asking question. So this is a second question. So first question, you have to give me a correct uh, comment, answer, uh, comment box. And this is a question number two. Yes. So everybody ready? Can we proceed further? Now, name to disease whose spread can be controlled by the eradication of Aedes mosquito. Remember Aedes? This is not AIDS. This is not AIDS. This is Aedes. Aedes mosquito. What's that, guys? Aedes mosquito. Yes, yes, yes. Hope my students know the correct answer. Okay, I'll write it down here. The first one we have is the dinghy. So, dengue, definitely everyone knows about dengue. Now, the second one we have is the chicken gunia. Clear? Let's move on to the next question. 
Now let's move on to the short answer type question. As far as your zoology part is considered, so what type of short answer type question was asked in 2018 paper? Let's have a look. Name the source of plant uh, source plant of heroin drug. How it is obtained from the plant? Second we have is write the effects of heroin on human body. Clear? So this is a two mark question. That means both the parts they will of one marks each. So this is also a one mark. And the second one is also a one mark. So accordingly, you have to give answer. See, clearly, so one one mark, so one one lines are enough for both of them. Clear? The first we have is a source of plant of heroin drug. Guys, heroin. So this is not your heroin, your Bollywood, Hollywood heroin. This is a drug. You remember, this, uh, this is from the chapter Human Health and Diseases. The uh, drug dependence topic. Adolescence and problems related to adolescence. So, we are talking about heroin. This is not heroin. Heroin. So, heroin is obtained from morphine. Morphine. It is obtained from morphine. And uh, from where do we obtain morphine? Morphine we obtain from papaver. Somniferum. Remember this. Papaver somniferum. This is how we obtain the morphine. Heroin, morphine. So basically from papaver from the latex. See, this comes from the latex. Right? Morphine. So and morphine. From morphine we can form heroin. How do we do that? Do, do, do that by acetylation. By acetylation. So there is a procedure which we have to follow. That is acetylation. Hope this is visible. I'll write it down with another color. Acetylation. Clear? And this is your latex. Will you remember this guys? Will you remember this? Important, important again I'm saying. Uh, whatever drugs we have, from where do we obtain it? What is their common name? What is their scientific name? It should be clear to you. Please, please, please keep them in your mind. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, what, write the effect of heroin on the human body. What's the effect guys? So it is a depressant. It is a depressant. That means it reduces the body activity. It doesn't increase the body activity. It reduces the body activity. Like alcohol. Alcohol is also depressant. So it reduces the body activity. So uh, hope clear. Right? Guys, I have to ask you one more question. Guys, uh, this is question number three. Verbally, I'm asking. Whenever we talk about a plant, which is a poppy plant, you hope you remember the poppy plant. So, what is the uh, scientific name of poppy plant that you have to tell me in comment section? You must be thinking, why Chavi Mam is asking, asking so many questions? Because that communication between you and me is important. If I will be asking questions, you will be answering or you will be going through your NCRT or any other book. Definitely while looking at that answer, you will be looking at other, op other things also. So, that matters. This is what I want from you guys. So, answer. Yes, I want your answer in the comment section. Irrespective at what time you are uh, uh, watching this session, irrespective, uh, maybe you are appearing for your next year paper, please answer in the comment section. Let's move on to the next question, short answer type question. So this is a short answer type question where we have to elaborate our answer. We will not only confine, confined to a one line or the two line, yes we have to explain a bit. Now. Write the, uh, with the help of algebraic equation, how did Hardy Weinberg explain that in a given population, the frequency of occurrence of allele of a gene is supposed to remain the same through the generation. You remember the Hardy Weinberg equilibrium? Okay, I'll talk about it. Hardy Weinberg 
equilibrium. Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So what do you mean by Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? That it says that allele frequency tend to remain constant generation after generation. generation after generation in a randomly mating randomly mating panmictic population in a randomly mating panmictic population, the gene frequency or the allele frequency, they always tend to remain constant. Clear? Always remember this. So, it always remains constant. Now, considering, or there are some conditions related to it. Condition. No external force should act on population. Clear? That means no migration should be there, no immigration, no emigration, no genetic drift, nothing. In that case, population always or the allele frequency, they always tend to remain constant. Clear? For this whole thing, an equation was given by uh, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium that is P plus Q is always equal to 1. Clear? Or P square plus Q square plus 2PQ is always equal to 1. Clear? Clear? Now, there are various words, P square, Q square, plus 2PQ equal to 1. Now, guys, what do you mean by P square? P square is gene frequency of homozygous, homozygous dominant, individual let's say it is a a clear what do you mean by q square gene frequency of homozygous recessive that is small a small a clear now 2 pq that is gene frequency of heterozygous individuals. So, heterozygous will be capital A, small a. Clear? Are you getting this point? Are you getting this point? I will talk about it. One, uh, one more second. See, guys, what do you mean by A? A, suppose we have is a G or allele. Definitely, there will be two alleles of a gene A. One is a capital A and second is a small a. These are the two alleles, capital A and small a. Clear? <coughs> now, here allelic frequency, allelic frequency will be what? Will be, suppose it is P. And for this, the allele frequency Allelic frequency is Q. So, this equilibrium says that whenever we have one gene, two allele, this we are saying that for the one gene, 
one gene it has two alleles capital a small a capital a indicate a dominant condition small a indicate a uh, recessive condition they say both the allele frequency are there p and the q they say that allele frequency of a dominant and the recessive of allele of both the alleles of one gene is always equal to one this is what a hardy weinberg equilibrium states this is what a hardy weinberg equilibrium states clear guys now let's move on next definitely these alleles they are always present in pairs so when we talk about uh, a condition which is capital a capital a so that means its frequency will be p square when we talk about capital a small a its frequency is always 2p q when we talk about small a small a its frequency will be q square always remember so clearly it should be clear to you that p square plus q square plus 2p q this is your same mathematics equation arithmetic equation is always equal to 1 guys is it clear hope buddies is it clear so this is a hardy weinberg equilibrium s so in a population where randomly mating things are happen uh, occurring and no external force is there the allele frequency they always tend to remain constant frequency they always tend to remain constant now clear now this is another because that was the previous question that was of 3 marks so a detailed uh, answer is required so you have to explain the whole hardy weinberg equilibrium now moving on to the next differentiate between analogous and homologous structure select and write the analogous structure from the list given below clear yeah. now two questions two parts are there the first one is difference between analogous and homologous structure analogous structure on one side i am writing analogous structures and second side i am writing homologous structures analogous and homologous structure now analogous structures guys these are those structures they are not similar as as far as their structure is considered now here i am writing no structural similarity no structural similarity but have same function same function clear yeah? now in this case we can take an example of wings of insect and bird if you look at the structure in both of them the insect they have membranous structure whereas the birds they have a feather like structure on their wings both the cases the structure is different but the function is same that is for the flying we are using it clear and analogous structure gives us or it leads to convergent evolution evolution it leads to convergent evolution always remember clear analogous structures thus no structural similarity but have same function now if you look at these wings they won't look similar but the function is same that it helps in flying this you have you must have studied in the session also now let's talk about the analogous structure now what do you mean by analogous structure again analogous structures guys these are those structures where the structure is same but function is different that means these are two closely related individuals anything they are very closely related to each other that's why that's the reason they are we are keeping them in one group but the function of a particular organ is different 
In this case, you can take very good example which is given here in, in, in NCRT. That is four limbs of human bats, cheetah, anything, any example. So, if you look at the structure of four limbs, in our cases we have phalanges, we have radio ulna, we have humerus. Look at the same thing, four limb of the bats also, same structure you will find over there also. In the cheetah also you will find the same structure, but function is different. In human, we use this for holding the objects. I am holding this pen because of my four limb. Next is for the bat, because with the help of the four limb, they hang on the trees. So accordingly, they are modified, the structure function is different. Second, for the cheetah, that is for the running. Clear? And these homologous structures, they always leads to, they leads to the divergent evolution. Divergent evolution. Clear buddies? The divergent evolution. Analogous structures and homologous structures. Examples which are there in your NCRT, they are important. Right now, I want you guys to stop this video and go and uh, see your NCRT. If you remember all the examples, well and good. If you don't, just revise it. Or maybe after this session, please, please, please revise the examples which are for the homologous and analogous structure. Again, I can, in fact, I can 90%, I, I won't say 100%, 90% I can vouch in this video that this question can be asked with your examination. 90% I can say. The homologous, any, in any form, examples or what type of evolution do they provide? So this definitely if I am, uh, I'll uh, because in the subsequent sessions I will be discussing these papers one by one. So over there also you will realize how many times these questions are asked, homologous, analogous, homologous, analogous, homologous, analogous. Every year it's, this question keeps on repeating. So few examples, two words, two evolutions related to it, keep them in, in your mind because definitely that is going to give you minimum three marks in your board examination. <laughs> Let's move on to the next part. The second part of this question is select and write the analogous structures from the given below. Now, wings of butterfly and birds, vertebrate hearts, tendrils of bonganvillea and cockerbita, tubers of uh, potato and sweet potato. Now listen, question is related to analogous structure. Whenever we have a question related to analogous structure, one line should strike immediately. That means structure is different, function is same. Structure is different, but function is same. Now, wings of butterfly and birds. Look at the wings of butterfly. Butterfly is what? It's an insect. What about birds? Birds as aves. Structure is different, but function is same. Yes, look at the butterfly birds. Their structure is different from that of birds. Do you agree to this point? Yes, this is a very good example of analogous structure. So here I am writing the analogous structure. Here, now vertebrate heart. Structure is same in everyone, almost. And the function is almost same. Tendrils of bonganvillea and cucurbita, in both the cases, the function is also same because they help in climbing, support. Tubers of potato and sweet potato. Now, tubers of potato. Look at this. Tubers of sweet potato. Tubers of sweet potato, they are modified what? Roots, right? Now, this potato is a uh, stem, clear? Structure is different. But the function is same that it helps in storage of food. So this is another example of analogous structure. Analogous structure. For such type of questions that these are analogous and homologous, uh, in your competitive books or any other books, thousands of examples or at least 10 to 15 examples are definitely given. But my point is, do not go for those 100 or the 10 or 15 examples. Just focus on those examples which are there in your NCRT. 
at least go through them. Definitely question will come from that topic and you will be able to uh, answer it without learning those 10 to 15 examples which you must have studied when uh, you were appearing for NEET, when when you thought let's go for NEET or any other examination. Only those which are important for your, which is there in your NCRT, just focus on those. Moving on to the next, how has the use of agrobacterium as a vector helped in controlling the Melidogyne incognita infestation in tobacco plant? Explain in the correct sequence. Now this is again a three mark question guys, three marks question. From the chapter, your biotechnology. So in biotechnology, this is asked the use of agrobacterium as vector. <coughs> now listen. Guys, agrobacterium. It's a genus of a bacteria. There are various species related to it. From these, various type of plasmid has been taken out. When we talk about agrobacterium tumefaciens, from agrobacterium tumefaciens, we have taken out one plasmid which is termed as TI plasmid. Which is termed as TI plasmid. Clear? As a vector. That has been used. Now listen to this point very, very, very carefully. <coughs> there was a nematode. Now also we have this nematode. We have a nematode. We saw that this nematode name is the Melidogyne. This one, this one, same. Melidogyne. Incognita. This is a nematode. Scientists, they were, uh, or uh, the farmers, they were working and uh, they were producing in the field. There was a plant which is tobacco plant. Which plant? Tobacco plants were there. They saw that this particular nematode, Melidogyne incognita, they feed on roots of of tobacco plant. So overall productivity is greatly affected. So they saw the productivity is very less because of this nematode. They were very worried. They went to various scientists and they discussed the, their problem. Now, scientist. They used one technique which is termed as RNA interference. RNA interference. So scientists, they said, don't be sad for farmers. We have one technique which is termed as RNA interference. With the help of RNA interference, we will kill these nematode Melidogyne incognita specifically. Clear? How? it was being done. Let's have a look. From Melidogyne in Cognita. Nematode. Scientists took out one gene. Scientists took out one gene. Took out one gene. If I am saying one gene, so that means one gene, that means a double standard DNA. Can I write here double standard DNA? Some part of the DNA or whole DNA, they took out a part of the DNA, double standard DNA. Clear? Now, this DNA with the help of a very, with the help of a method or they did some modification, they introduced this into tobacco plant. Tobacco plant. Now listen, this gene is important for the survival of the uh, Melidogyne incognita. So that means this gene was very important. If this gene will not work in this nematode, 
the nematode will die. So they thought this is a vital gene. Let's take out this gene. Let's take out this particular gene from one of the nematode. They took out it of, out of it. They make a, made a copy of it and with the help of a vector which is termed as Ti plasmid. Which plasmid? Ti plasmid. Ti plasmid is taken from Melidogyne incognita. That is inserted into, now with the help of Ti plasmid, because Ti plasmid has a capability of causing crown gall disease in plants, in leguminous plants. But they uh, modified this plasmid in this way that they, this is not, not this doesn't cause any disease. So they are uh, non-pathogenic you can say. Now this is a man-made and now they have introduced this double standard DNA directly into the tobacco plant. Now very carefully listen here. That means in a tobacco plant, we are having a gene of melidogyne incognita. Yeah. Now, both of these strand, they will transcribe and translate. First, they will transcribe. In transcription, what does happen? DNA forms RNA. Normally, in transcription, one of the strand of the DNA forms the mRNA. Here, both the strands of DNA, both the strands of DNA, they will form the RNA. So, they will form RNA. Both will form RNA. So, what has happened guys over here? The transcription. Transcription. You remember molecular basis of inheritance chapter? Transcription. Now, one is termed as a sense RNA. Sense RNA. Second is termed as antisense RNA. This is termed as antisense RNA. Definitely, because they were transcribed from a segment of DNA, those segment of DNA which are which were complemented to each other. So these sense and RNA, <coughs> they will also be complementary to each other. So both of them. They will join together and they will form a double standard RNA. That means in our tobacco plant, we have this double standard RNA. Now, what will happen? Melidogyne incognita will come, and Melidogyne incognita will come and binds or feed on the uh, plant. Clear? Now, here I am writing. When nematode come and feed on tobacco, This double stranded RNA go inside nematode. Go inside nematode. Yeah. What will happen next? In the body of Melidogyne incognita, it will bind to the RNA. Now. In nematode. See, nematode already has this gene. They already has this DNA. DNA definitely will form a RNA. This DNA in melidogyne incognita forms RNA, a single standard RNA. Clear? In nematode, RNA binds with double standard RNA. Now this double standard RNA is going to bind to this RNA. They will be complementary to each other. Clear? And they will form a complex which is termed as RISC. What will form? The RISC. RNA induced silencing complex. Some more proteins they will come and they will bind to it. So that is termed as RNA Induced silencing 
complex. Formation will occur and ultimately what will happen? RNA will not translate. When RNA will not translate, the melidogynein cognita will die because this protein is important. Because I told you this gene is vital for them. If their product has been suppressed, if the functioning of that is has been suppressed, that means there will be no formation of that product. That means melidogynein cognita will go. So this is a whole technique behind the RNA interference. So RNA has interfered. Double standard RNA has bound to the RNA which is important or which is producing a product which is important for the survival of melidogyne incognita. This is the most easiest way I have taught you what actually a RNA interference is. Yes, details are there but for your board examination this is enough. Just remember this, this is enough for your board exam examination. In fact, I must say for any of your entrance examination either it is NEAT or it is your uh, CUET examination question will not come beyond this. Yes, the depth is there. I won't say that this is the only thing which you require as far as your PhD is considered. No, 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 no. I'm only talking about your 12th class. So this is enough. If you'll go into depth, you can itself write a thesis on it. Uh, you can say 100 to 150 pages, you will find related to it. But this is important. Just keep those information which is important for your examination. That's it. When you will be doing research, go detail, uh, go into detail. But till now, this is important. Clear? Yeah? Yes, buddies? Yes? So whenever uh, someone asks you a question related uh, to uh, any of the detailed complex, how this happens, what are the other proteins which are involved in it? For your own, see, I am telling you the question will not be asked. For your own confidence, just go through the previous year questions. Either it is board or any other entrance examination, go through it. You will not find any question detail other than this. So, have some confidence that you have studied this. That means it is uh, uh, only important. Clear? Clear buddies? Now, let's move on to the next question. Explain out, outbreeding, outcrossing, crossbreeding practices in animal husbandry. Now, first we have is outbreeding. Outbreeding. What do you mean by outbreeding? That means, listen, breeding between, breeding between two organisms. which doesn't have doesn't have common ancestor common ancestor between four to six generation so Till 4 to 6 generation, if there is no common ancestor, that means it is outbreeding, right? They belong to same breed or sometime they can be, they can be between species, between two different species, which is termed as interspecific hybridization. Anything can happen. This is termed as interspecific hybridization. Clear? Now, second one is outcrossing. 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 Outcrossing is what? This is a cross between two individuals. Belonging to same breed 
but no common ancestor for four to six generation four to six generation clear yeah. out crossing moving on to the next we have is the cross breeding what do we have guys is cross breeding cross breeding so cross breeding is what cross breeding that means we have is individual one right they have some uh, you can say a, a, a qualities a particular or you can say the male is of superior quality individual two this is also also of a superior quality female clear so cross breed we are doing a breeding of it so so they are going to produce a progenies out of it which are having both the characters individual one character individual two character also so this is a superior male superior male this is superior female in this the example one of the very good example we have is a uh, the hisar dale a sheep hisar dale clear so hisar dale is actually a cross between bikaneri ewes and uh, merino rams bikaneri ewes and merino rams clear cross breeding so these three words this should be clear to you keep this in your mind forever forever will you keep this yes don't at all forget whatever <coughs> we are learning today now organic farmers prefer biological control of diseases and pest to the use of chemicals for the same purpose justify so now this is again a question of a three marks total question is of three marks two parts are there now when we talk about guys so this i am discussing verbally so whenever we talk about the organic farming organic farming we don't use chemical fertilizers because chemical fertilizers they are not specific when they are not specific that means they are not only targeting to a particular pest population they can target to those population uh, of insects also which are important for us for which are important for the plant so do uh, whatever organic farmers we have organic farmers they uh depend on the or uh, like they do organic farming that means they produce organic waste and from the organic waste they produce organic uh, uh you can say uh, uh fertilizers and these organic fertilizer they use in their plants no chemicals such are used because definitely they affect the non target population also second is given example of bacterium fungus and an insect that are used as biocontrol agent first let's talk about bacteria as far as the bacterium is considered hope you have heard of bacillus thuringiensis yes the bt that's a bacteria example second the insect have you ever heard of lady bug they are very much friendly clear uh, other than that they are saying fungus example the trichoderma trichoderma clear so these are some bio control agents right moving on to the next is who has uh, uh, development of bio reactor helped in bio re how has the development of bio reactor helped in biotechnology <coughs> guys in biotechnology biotechnology or the recombinant dna technology what we are doing is we are modifying 
modifying a cell for a product this is what we are doing guys for we, for a product that is the reason this is how we are modifying it and right now when we are modifying the cell we need a product that's the reason we are modifying now i want multiple copies of this cells i want bulk product i want what do i want is bulk product so in a bulk way i have to culture these cells that means i am going to culture in bulk how can i do this i can do this with the help of bioreactor with the help of bioreactors now these bioreactors they have a huge capacity of around 100 to 1000 liter they have a huge capacity and in the bioreactor we can maintain sterile condition in the bioreactor we uh, can regulate the ph we can regulate the temperature this is what we want and this is how we do so bioreactor guys is it clear now the development of bioreactor and biotechnology can you explain this so here i am writing we have is ph regulator we have is the temperature regulator we can maintain sterile condition because i don't want any other cell to develop other than the cell which i modified using recombinant dna technology clear so this is a advantage of using bioreactors in a huge way in a huge vessels it's like a, a pressure cooker which we use it's like a pressure cooker is very small but it's a 1000 liter uh, vessel we have so it's a closed vessel so depending on the use we have open vessel also so let's not talk about it so name the most commonly used bioreactor and describe its working so here i'm just writing the detailed working or the detailed diagram please go to ncert and read it so the most commonly used we have is the stirred tank bioreactor stirred tank bioreactor clear in the chapter biotechnology principle and processes the last two diagram they are of stirred tank bioreactor and sparged tank bioreactor look at the diagram of a stirred tank bioreactor they have uh, you can say rounded bottom they have they have one propeller which keeps on moving which uh, increases the agitation or aeration in the culture so the diagram please diagram again i'm saying please refer to your ncert no other book please refer and keep practicing these diagrams also if i am telling you that this diagram is important right now try, try to if you remember that is well and good because we have a short of time right now here so i cannot uh, draw the diagram here you i want you guys to draw this diagram in your notes and uh, please remember this now <clears throat> let's move on to the next question explain the roles of following with the help of an example each in recombinant dna technology the two uh, things are there first one is a restriction enzyme and second one we have is a plasmid <coughs> restriction enzyme Uh, today in the morning, I was thinking uh, when I used to study, the major problem was we we were we used to buy books, we used to read them. So overall, we we used to only buy one book. See NCERT, yes, we used to have, and one support book we used to buy. At that time, when I was a kid, that time in fact internet was there, but. we were not having those uh, cell phones which are which we have right now so within a today whenever we face any doubt we go to google we google everything whatever we want to know at that time the things were they were very less now you have so many resources like let's give you let me give you one example uh, today i am teaching you this uh, uh, on this platform uh, your uh, physics wala platform and uh, you have this video available for 2018 paper 
सपोज एट दैट टाइम वेन आई हैव टू गो फॉर द टू थाउजेंड एटीन और एनी अदर प्रीवियस ईयर पेपर नॉट टू थाउजेंड एटीन डेफिनेटली एनी अदर पेपर देन आई हैव टू बाय अ बुक अ सी बी एस ई सैम्पल पेपर बुक और प्रीवियस ईयर बुक देन आई यूज टू गो एंड आई यूज टू रिवाइज ईच एंड एवरी क्वेश्चन दिस इज वट वी यूज टू डू नाउ अर डेज यू हैव रिसोर्स यू हैव वाई आर यू वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो जस्ट बिकॉज यू आर डेडिकेटेड यू हैव दिस रिसोर्स यू कैन यूटिलाइज इट सो वट आई वॉन्ट फ्रॉम यू इज टू यूटिलाइज दीज रिसोर्स कंप्लीटली यू हैव टाइम आई नो some distractions because of internet is there but there are various positive things which is related to internet today we have now you can watch these videos whatever problem you face you can easily google it so yes everything has its own pros and cons so this is a good thing i i believe this is a good thing now restriction enzymes they are what restriction the enzymes they are molecular seizures what they do they cut double stranded dna at specific palindromic palindromic site so they cut at specific palindromic site palindromic site is a palindromic sequence and this particular sequence is that which either we read from a 5 prime or a 3 prime direction it gives us same result so it cuts at it clear restriction enzyme they are of various types like we have is eco r1 we have is hind2 we have is sma1 we we have is pvu1 we have is pst1 and they are isolated from various resources here is examples are there now in this you can write that they can cut or they can produce two different type of cut so they can produce the sticky ends and blunt ends clear so when we have to join two things when we have to join a vector and a dna same restriction enzyme is used in both of them so that same type of sticky ends are produced and they can join together clear restriction and en enzymes they cut a dna fragment so they always target phosphodiester bond cut which bond the phosphodiester bond now next we have is plasmids what do we have guys is plasmids so what do you mean by plasmids plasmids are the extra chromosomal extra chromosomal dna present in bacteria right and this plasmid this extra chromosomal dna which is there they impart extra property they are not vital but they provide extra property like antibiotic resistant antibiotic resistance clear so whenever guys you are facing any problems related to any topic please comment definitely i read all my comments all my students comment i'll go through them and whenever you face any problem just write it down i'll definitely revert over there so this is also one of the way why you which you can communicate with your teacher so keep be active everyone medically advised to all the young mother that breastfeeding is a best for the newborn babies do you agree give reasons in support of your answers yes definitely why because this is rich in antibody rich in antibodies ig a yes they are rich in antibody rich in minerals 
and vitamins. Clear? So it is always advised to uh, give mother's milk to the baby. In fact, when a child is there on a mother's feed, chances of constipation, chances of diarrhea is very less because there will be no infection. If we are giving animal milk to the baby, definitely the chance of infection is very high. So it is not at all advised to give animal milk to baby before eight to nine months. Yes. Now, let's move on to the next question. Draw a diagram of a mature sperm, label any three parts and write their function. Let's discuss it. So, overall, this is how a sperm look like. It has a chromosome, nucleus, it has plasma membrane, neck, proximal centriole, it has spiral mitochondria, yes, so let's discuss this whole part, it's termed as head, this is neck, this is middle piece, this is tail. Clear? Now, this is termed as acrosome. In acrosome, we have is acrosomal enzyme. And acrosomal enzyme, basic function is to penetrate. So all the functions I am explaining with the help of diagram only. This you can write. After this, you have to write each and every point one by one. Like this is a function of a head. This is how the neck, the middle piece and the tail. Now, acrosome. Now, we have is the nuclear membrane. This is inside it, we have is the nucleus or the genetic material is there. Genetic material. Clear buddies? Now, uh, here we have is the proximal centriole. We have is this the axial filament. We have is this axial filament. We have this spiral mitochondria. Clear? So the function, hope you all know, the spiral mitochondria it provides energy. The tail helps in movement and the head has the genetic material. So this structure should be there in your mind. Four parts are there, head, neck, middle piece and tail. Head function, it has enzymes, it has nucleus, the genetic material. Then it has a middle piece which is uh, having mitochondria, provides energy and the tail which helps in the, the movement. Clear? Yes, but is it clear? So each and every part function should be clear to you. Now let's move on to the long answer type question. Here you have to explain things in a detailed way. Explain menstrual cycle in humans. How are the scientific understanding of the menstrual cycle? Human females help as a contraceptive measures. Now the menstrual cycle. Menstrual cycle. See, 
what menstrual cycle is periodic formation and degradation degradation of endometrium this is menstrual cycle clear and this is under the control of hormones this occurs in the case of apes and humans clear and if this is under the control of hormone of hormones under the control of hormones clear this is a cycle so it lasts for 28 to 29 days clear let's talk about the phases the first phase is termed as the menstrual flow phase menstrual flow phase then we have is the follicular phase then we have is the ovulatory phase and the next the last we have is the luteal phase each and every phase you have to explain because it is a five marks question so what is a menstrual flow phase menstrual flow phase that means endometrium breaks endometrium breaks shedding of endometrium occur so the endometrium cell along with the blood it comes out of the female body next is a follicular phase in the follicular phase the primary follicle primary follicle forms the graafian follicle the mature follicle clear this is one thing second thing in this case the endometrium reform reform as i told you that this whole phase is under the control of hormone over here the level of fsh and lh increases that causes the follicles to grow next phase we have is the if you have any problem related to any topic or if you want a detailed topic out of it definitely i can do that also just comment this is what i want now next we have is a ovulatory phase now because of lh surge because of sudden increase in lh what happens is the graafian follicle graafian follicle release secondary oocyte secondary oocyte clear yeah. now the luteal phase what happens in luteal phase guys in the luteal phase the secondary you can say graafian follicle <coughs> remains of graafian follicle in fact it forms corpus luteum it forms corpus luteum and corpus luteum secretes hormone which is termed as progesterone so progesterone function is to maintain endometrium maintain endometrium it maintain endometrium clear so these are the different phases the first phase menstrual flow phase we have is a follicular phase ovulatory phase and the luteal phase clear so this you have to explain like it is a three mark question now how can the scientific understanding of the menstrual cycle of a human female help as a contraceptive measure now this you can explain with respect to two different topic the first one is a natural method clear 
in the natural method hope you remember the periodic abstinence abstinence that means no coitus during ovulation that means whenever ovulation will happen the intercourse is always avoided that means if we say the egg has a life of around two days if a ovulation has happened the egg has a life of two days that it stays for two days and the sperm has a life of three days clear so at the time of ovulation that means at the day 14 plus 2 and the minus 2 days the coitus is avoided so with this the uh, you can say the, as per the question this is a method of a uh, you can say a birth control method second in the chemical method some medicines are prescribed you remember Medicines has a combination of progesterone or progesterone plus estrogen. You remember these medicines or the pills? Now, they, we, with the help of menstrual cycle, if someone knows about, if scientists know, knows about menstrual cycle, then only these chemicals, they are uh, prescribed. For example, if you remember that we have to, like one has to start taking, start taking this, these medicine. Uh, in uh, first to fifth day between first to fifth day of menstrual cycle then take up to 21 days regularly someone has to take then after a gap of seven days gap in some books it is five days gap seven days gap this has to be repeated again so these medicines like mala d mala n available in the market this is how one has to take it so how this was possible because scientists they studied the menstrual cycle what was the question the scientific understanding of the menstrual cycle human feeling may help as a contraceptive measures so the two ways you can explain the first way you can explain with respect to the natural method and second you can explain with the help of the chemical method right so this was your last question the long answer type question the last question so with this we have completed your 2018 paper any topic if you want that i should teach in a detail you can comment definitely that topic will come on this channel so let's wind up over here hope you liked and enjoyed this topic and keep watching this series of pyqs and uh, this is going to help you a lot in your target uh, which is maybe, which can be 90 or the 95% uh, examination. If you want, how many uh, marks do you want to attain your examination? Do comment in the comment section also. So take care, keep studying, keep rocking, keep yourself safe in this time. Thank you so much students for watching this.